of hope. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said, I woe is me, for I am undo, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a, of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And uh, I would like to thank each one of you for being here today and for hosting with us. Uh, just to let me know, uh, I'm a retired pastor. I had served in active ministry for 44 years. Mm. And last uh, October of 2022, I retired. And I thought I would never preach. <laughs> but then I was requested to preach in some of the churches that I had been to. We requested to go to places that have to do evangelistic meetings. Mm. So, you know, I, you know I, God used me still. Mm. And when I came here the first time, this is my third time, by the way, with Ms. Asumin. Uh, when I came here, I said, uh, maybe next time I go to another church to visit. But then, something I cannot just get over with. I said, Maybe because God spared me of many things and given me this much time, God has still a plan to use me for His glory. Mm. So I said, well, let me see. Let me go back to the church. And then I met Pastor John. And John told, Pastor John said that uh, if you have time, if you could come and, and speak here, it will be more beneficial. So I said to the Lord, Lord, maybe this is an opening that you will use me. You know, I, I know that I don't speak as, just like how you speak, because I'm a Filipino, even if I'm a U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. But then I said, well, if the, the donkey could speak to Balaam, <laughs> and Balaam will be able to understand it, I believe that God can help me as I speak that you can understand the message. And I would like to tell you that I am a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. Amen. So I preach a Seventh-day Adventist message. Mm -hmm. But I'm not preaching out of the Word, not from the Word of God, I'm preaching from the Word of God. But just to let you know that I would be true to my calling as a pastor, and I would not hold back the truth that I knew that is beneficial for each one of us. Mm. And actually, today is supposed to be my wife was trying to help, trying to, to, to scribble something to introduce me. And I said, don't introduce me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because I know that when she introduces me, she will keep on going and going. <laughs> and I said, in this time, I don't want them to know me. I want them to know Jesus. Okay. And I would like to introduce to you myself that I'm a great sinner and I've been saved by God's grace. Amen. Shall we pray? Amen. Father God, this morning, thank you for this privilege, O Lord, that you have given me, O God, to speak for you. And O God, right now, I know that I am not capable Lord, of doing this work because this is spiritual things. Because it is your word that your people need to hear. But, oh God, you use people in who they are and when they are available. And to the oh Lord, I present myself asking the oh Lord for your mercy. Oh God, I just pray, let your angels, oh Lord, take the coals of fire from the altar. And touch my lips. Stand to me. What is in his hand? What is in his hand? Now I'm not asked to that preach. I always ask questions. What is what, what was in his hand? A live coal. Taken from the altar. In the tongue. And then it says, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched the lips. Now Think for a moment. 
Can you just feel how painful the experience was? Mm. Now, I'm trying to be real. Mm. A live coal touching your lips. Mm. Can you smell the burning flesh? Can you feel the sizzling, the searing, and the burning taste of your burning skin? Indeed, sin destroys. Everything demands for a payment of death. However, that painful and hurting experience resulted in that cleansing by Isaiah. His sins were fully and completely forgiven and thoroughly cleansed. So every time we acknowledge our faults and confess our sins, God really forgives us. In fact, Jesus mentioned of two worshippers, the Pharisee and the tax collector. What was the prayer of the Pharisee? Hey Lord, I am faithful. I have done everything. I have given my tithes. You know, I have done every good thing. I, you must be grateful that I am this kind of good person. And in the other hand, the tax collector beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. No wonder Jesus said that only the tax collector returned home forgiven. The good news for each one of us Every time we acknowledge our sins and forget, for confess to God in the name of Jesus, we will indeed be forgiven. So, I would like to take time to review the three elements first. What's the first element? Experience all, seeing the Lord in His holy temple, perfect and full of beauty. What's the second? In contrast to God's perfection, see ourselves and acknowledge that we are sinners. And we are hopeless. Okay, what's number three? Long for the cleansing of God. And what happens? God will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's the good news of it. Now, then we come to the last one. Are we still? I think I'm about. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, we're not. You can wait. Because I will let you go out. <laughs> if you can wait. If you stop it more, preach it. Respond to God's call to become God's calling warrior for the lost. What is it? Verse 8 reads Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then God said, Here am I, send me. There are two questions, two questions. Who will come? Who will whom shall I send? Which means who will become my apostle? Or who is my apostle? The word apostle comes from the Greek word apostolos. An apostolos means a messenger, a one sent with a message. <coughs> so when God asks the question, whom shall I send? Who would become an apostle that sent one with a message? And then the second question is, who will go for us? Who or who is a question that anticipates for volunteers or a voluntary response? Who will go for us? To go means to move on a course, to travel to a place, to travel and stay in a place. Take note of this. When you go for the Lord, it means that you have to go to a place and stay there if need be. The second thing is, to go is to take a certain course and follow a certain procedure. And the third is, it means to become lost, consumed, or spent. This is my call. He was not concerned about his life. He was concerned about the preaching of the gospel. He was willing to be lost. He was willing to be spent. The next one is, to go is to proceed without delay and often in a thoughtless or reckless manner. You don't even know what would happen there. We have shown John Andrews, in which his name was used as the name of Andrews University. He was with his two children, the first ones who went on and, as a missionary to, out, to the foreign land. He was sent. He was spent, and he died there. And then he says, who will go for us? You know, in the first question, whom will I send? 
The noun is I. The next question is, who will go for us? us. From singular to plural. Mm -hmm. Now, I cannot hold it, but like this, I like to share this. In the beginning, God, in Hebrew, Ber uh, uh, Bereshit Barak Elohim. The word is Elohim. Elohim is a singular word, but the form is plural. It's amazing. Singular word, the form is plural. But don't you know that in verse 26, it says, let us make man in our image. Mm -hmm. The God who was singular in the form of plural becomes, let us make man in our image. Mm -hmm. Here, whom shall I send singular? And who will go for us? So, without any doubt, this is talking about God. Now, what was Isaiah's response? Then, his, then said I, here am I, send me. Now, have you noticed, have you asked the question, why did Isaiah volunteer to go? Why? Now, look, look this. Isaiah's volunteering to go is a natural appreciating response from a grateful and thankful heart. When Isaiah received forgiveness and cleansing for his worship experience, he recognized it as indebtedness to God's mercy and grace shown to him so that he willingly responded to God's call to work for God. He knew that he himself was a sinner. He knew that he was undone. And when God cleansed him, from his sins and penalty of sins, he recognized that it was at an indebtedness to God for his mercy and grace. So that when God said, who will go for us? He said, here am I. Lord, please send me. Isaiah pretty well knew that forgiveness of sin and cleansing from God is God's precious gift to him. He understood that his broken relationship with God was restored back when he was forgiven. We need to understand that willingness to witness to God through God's saving grace is the highest form of response to our worship experience. Because we have been saved from sin, we need to become a missionary. Wow, pastor, missionary, what is this missionary? Do you know what is a missionary? What is a missionary? Now, I'd like to simplify it for you. A missionary is a beggar who found a place of bread and tells other beggars to go where it is found. In other words, when you experience the cleansing of God of your sins, you feel indebted. Oh, I'm just a saved sinner. I will tell other sinners how to find forgiveness and cleansing. So that mission will take place. When we experience the fullness of God's glory and we experience this cleansing of our sins, we cannot just say, uh, just leave, give it to them. Because we become a part and responsible of proclaiming the message of salvation. The experience of being forgiven and cleansed from sin is an experience that qualifies any person to become a liberator together with God. Now, Jesus emphasized it to the demoniac from Gadara of the Decapolis region. That was also the experience of Isaiah here. What did, well, how, how does Jesus end that experience with the man in, in Gadara? When he was cleansed, all the people of the region came and in the, uh, they had respect, uh, they requested Jesus to leave the region. And then the, the man cleansed from the demoniac from angel spirits, ask the Lord, can I go with you? Because he felt secure in Jesus' presence. And what was the, 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 the response of Jesus? Go home. Wow. And tell others what God has done in your life. When we go and tell others about the love of Jesus. When we see this is a change taking place in our lives. People will be convinced and people will believe that we have been with Jesus. Let it be brothers and sisters that in every time we worship God, we have met Him, have seen His beauty, have seen His character, 
and see ourselves worthless and undone and sinful and ask for forgiveness and He will cleanse us. But remember this. After you are cleansed, after you are forgiven, after you have received the gift of salvation, don't forget to tell others. Be a missionary. Go and tell others that salvation is available in Jesus Christ. So what's the first one? I would like to repeat. I, I have been a teacher for a long time. See God. I have my students, pastors now, becoming leaders in the mission and union. Amen. Now, the first experience is experience in awe, seeing God sitting on His throne, perfect and holy, full of you. The second, in contrast to that perfection, see and acknowledge yourself sinning to death and hopeless. And then, third, that's the third one. Confess your sins and ask for pardon and you will be forgiven and cleansed. And then fourth, respond to God's call to become his co for God, for the lost. So to end our study today, you know, I have, I have, uh, I have gone long for 40 minutes, sorry. <laughs> I have two questions for you. Is there anybody here today who needs to experience God's forgiveness and cleansing from sin? Mm -hmm. If you feel that need, I would like to ask you to join with me in standing this morning. Or that. Would you stand with me? If you need to experience God's forgiveness and cleansing from sin, stand with me, please. And the second question is, for all of us who receive forgiveness and cleansing from sin, who would like to respond to God's call of mercy by telling others about the salvation that Jesus offers? Would you raise your hand if you would like to do it? Thank you very much. Now, I would like to pray with you. But I would like to pray that if you need forgiveness of sins and cleansing, don't, don't delay. Accept Jesus as your Savior now. Because every moment that passes is important and, and solid. Shall we have all the prayer? Oh Lord God, today we thank you for bringing to us your word. Thank you, dear Lord, that you have allowed us to realize ourselves that we are nothing, we are imperfect, we are sinners, and we are in need of cleansing, and we need the salvation that Christ only offers. Today, oh Lord, here your people, you stood in their feet, oh Lord, because they want, oh Lord, to respond by going to others and telling them about the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. I just pray, Lord, please strengthen each one of them. Please nurture them, O Lord. Please make them witnesses, make them missionaries, O Lord, to tell others the hope of salvation. Thank you, the Lord, for blessing each of us today, for granting us every blessing as after you have forgiven our sins, that we will just volunteer, O Lord, to become your missionaries. We ask all his favors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Oh Lord God, we humbly come before your presence today. We just appreciate, oh Lord, your intention of saving us. We just would like, oh Lord, to thank you and be grateful, oh God, for giving us a chance to know who you are, to see your beauty of character, and to help us be cleansed, oh Lord, and found you. And, oh God, here we are. We are willing to do your will. We are willing to tell your story. I just pray, oh Lord, that you will please dismiss us with your blessings today. And allow us, oh God, to have the guidance of the Holy Spirit until we come again and meet each one here and be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.